medical detection, just as in criminal investigation, the diagnostician must continually be on the alert to avoid being sidetracked by red herrings drawn across his path. I've found this to be especially true in my own field of neurology. A case in point comes to mind out of my years of practice. It concerned a young man whom I had fleetingly met in Paris several years before, who suddenly and unexpectedly bounced back into my life one quiet and peaceful Sunday morning in Center City. But there was nothing peaceful left of that Sunday from the moment my housekeeper opened the door to him. Yes? Uh, Dr. Hudson's residence? Yes. Ah, you must be Mrs. Hudson, I presume. <laughs> The name happens to be Grady, Mrs. Grady. I'm Dr. Hudson's housekeeper. Would you mind telling me who you are and what your business is? Well, the name happens to be Deering, Walker Deering. I, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I seem to have come away again without a single business card in my pockets. You know, you just wouldn't believe the number of people who won't believe you're anybody if you can't prove to them that you're somebody with a little piece of printed cardboard. On the other hand, it is Sunday. And perhaps a business card on the Sabbath might not be... Oh, what's the matter? Something wrong? Perhaps you could be telling me that. What booby hatch did they let you out of? <laughs> an artist can't be that much of a freak these days, even in Center City. Oh, it's an artist you are. I might have known with all that paraphernalia and your gift of gab. You're a very observant woman, Mrs. Grady. Dr. Hudson didn't say a word to me about expecting... Uh, neither did I. Now, just a minute, young man. Is Dr. Hudson expecting you, or isn't he? Well, yes, and no. In that case, he's not at home. Would you expect him? Well, yes and no. In that case, I'll wait. Now, just a minute. Where are you going? Is it business you want to see Dr. Hudson on? Without an appointment? On Sunday? Then it's personal. I'm going to paint Dr. Hudson's portrait, Mrs. Grady. Inasmuch as there is no fee involved, it could hardly be called business. On the other hand, since it involves painting, which is my business, it could not entirely be called personal. Does that answer your question? Dr. Hudson's going to have his portrait painted. It's funny, he, he didn't say a word about it to me. Well, he doesn't even know it yet. We think he'd object. Well, now, that all depends. There are all kinds of painters, the same as there are all kinds of cooks. You either cook with cabbage or you cook with paint. Whichever nature fitted you for. Just a minute, young man. I want you to know that I don't cook with cabbage, and I'm considered a very good cook. Well, I happen to be a good painter, too. One of the best. No, if you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Ah. University Gallery, grand opening next Sunday night. Uh, that's good for two. Walker Deering, exhibition of paintings. I don't know why people are always so impressed with print. Well, surely the university wouldn't sponsor your show if it wasn't worthwhile. <laughs> Nonsense. Half of the stuff they go for stinks. You know, this is about as dull a room to paint anybody in as you could ask for. Now, just a minute, young man. If you thought for a moment that I was going to let you, or even Mr. Rembrandt himself, come in here and mess up my living room with a lot of sloppy paint. Ah, this looks more like it. A man is like an animal, Mrs. Grady. You always try to paint him in his characteristic habitat. Hmm, books, desk, fireplace, easy chair. Ah, French windows for a balancing peep of nature. It's a perfect setting for a great portrait of a great surgeon. I've always told Dr. Hudson, you can mess up your study as much as you like, but when it comes to my living room, I won't stand for it, not for a minute. Mrs. Grady, don't you think it's about time you did something about that cabbage you're suffocating in the kitchen? The odor in here is positively obnoxious. Young man, I want you to know that I won't allow a cabbage in any house of mine. I'd rather resign my job first. Odor! It smells as sweet and clean in here as it does every Sunday morning of the year. No offense, Mrs. Grady. Some of us just happen to be born a little more sensitive than others. Yes, and some of us happen to be born with enough gall to more than make up for it. <coughs> Oh, um, would you excuse me, Mrs. Grady? I have to make a phone call. Must be nearly time for you to be getting ready for church, hmm? And it occurs to me that church might be just the thing for some of us who have such high and mighty opinions of ourselves.
Mm -hmm. Hello? Is it the Barlow residence? Is Miss Nell Barlow there? I see. There is still a Miss Nell Barlow, isn't there? Fine. Splendid. Delighted to hear it. No, no message. Uh, just tell Miss Barlow that Mr. Walker Deering called. Got it? Walker Deering. Right. Bye for now. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, Dr. Hudson. You don't remember me? No, frankly, I don't. Walker Deering. We met fleetingly in Paris several years ago at Nell Barlow's apartment. Walker Deering, of course. You're the young man who... Uh, who broke Nell's heart and all that muck. Well, you didn't exactly behave like Galahad on a white charger. What are you doing here in Center City? Making a PA with an exhibition of my paintings at the University Gallery. PA? A personal appearance. The grand opening is a week from tonight. Well, you sound successful. I'm one of the best painters in America today. And I see you haven't lost your modesty either. False modesty is no flower to wear in your buttonhole. Have you uh, seen Nell? No. How is she? Happy, adjusted. Lovelier than ever. It's a wonderful girl. Well, she was two years ago when you knew her. The timing was bad for us. I, I was just too young for her. Well, it's better than being too old. I don't know if you know the whole story about what happened back there in Paris. Pretty much. Nell confided in me. I behaved like an unmitigated heel. Did everything in the book to hurt her because I knew I could count on her. It was a cheap way of building up my own ego. She was taking a terrific beating professionally. However, that's under the bridge. If she's free, I may still have a chance with her. Yes, that's the beauty of youth. You get a second chance. I know now why I acted the way I did. I also know I'd never act that way again. Oh. Sounds like you really put yourself through the ringer. Everybody does sooner or later. You say you're here with this uh, exhibition of paintings. You plan to settle here? That'll be up to now. Suppose she refuses to see you. That'll be her loss, but I don't think she will. Won't be easy to reestablish yourself in her confidence. All she needs to do is to meet me halfway. Well, all I can do is wish you luck. You can do a lot more. Oh? I want to paint your portrait. If you give me the nod, I'm ready to go to work. You don't waste any time making up people's minds for them, do you? The fee is $1,500 for a Walker Deering portrait this year. I'm going to do yours for nothing. Oh. What's the catch? You'd be worth the 1500 to me as publicity. I find that you're not an unfamiliar personage across the country. I could have the picture ready for the local exhibit if you could give me a couple of hours of your time today. Well, I need a portrait like I need a hole in it, but if it'll help you out... All I need is two or three hours of your time. How do you want to paint me like this? You uh, wouldn't have one of your uh, surgical robes here, by any chance. I sort of visualize you in a white gown. In my study? Make it look sort of like Halloween, wouldn't it? Or maybe that's the effect you're after. The surgical gown is part of you. So is the rest here. It would sort of synthesize the surgeon and the scholar in one fell swoop. Well, I had planned to spend the morning studying. Well, go right ahead. You won't bother me any. You get your studying done, I'll get the portrait underway. Well, if Mrs. Grady's still here, I'll see about that surgical gown. Yes? Oh, Nell. Well, this is a pleasure. How are you? Yes, I'm going to be here all morning, but... Nell? She hung up on me before I could warn her you were here. Coming over, isn't she? Yes. But I don't think I should let her step into you without some warning. I rather thought we'd be seeing her. She seemed quite upset. 
Look here, Deering. You didn't by any chance. I merely phoned from here a little while ago and left my name, just so she'd know I'm in town. You knew she'd call me the minute she knew it. Of course. We couldn't meet again under better auspices, could we? So all this uh, portrait painting was just so much malarkey. Not a bit. I'm in business. I hope you still do. I have half a mind to call Ellen Stopper. Do you think that'd be fair? I've been working toward this moment for two years. I think my persistency and constancy deserve a break, don't you? All I'm asking is not to be put in the middle of a situation which could easily prove embarrassing for all of us. If Nell had a father, I would have gone to him. <laughs> oh, no. Well, who else was there for me to talk to? She has a mother, for heaven's sake. A woman wouldn't understand. Besides, I could never bring myself to tell her. You probably arranged this whole exhibition of paintings just to see Nell again, huh? I wanted to see Nell. I wanted Nell to see my paintings. There's two years of hard work behind that exhibit. I think she'll be proud of me. You too, when you see it. <laughs> Cupid Hudson. It hardly fits in with the eminent surgeon you desire to commit to canvas for posterity, does it? Surgeons don't live in a vacuum any more than the rest of us. Well, that'll be now. She lives only a couple of blocks from here. Why don't you just sit there and let me be sketching you? It might make the whole thing easier to handle for both of us. It might be easier for me if I had a scalpel in my hand and you laid out on the operating table in front of me. Oh, Doctor, uh, Miss Nell Barlow is here to see you. I know, Mrs. Grady, sure in. And I hope you realize, Mr. Deering, that we don't cherish paint on our floors. You look after your cabbage, Mrs. Grady, and I'll look after my paint. Cabbage. What's this between you and Mrs. Grady? If there's anything I detest, it's the smell of cooking cabbage. I don't smell any cabbage in here. Mrs. Grady has probably so dulled your sense of smell with her plebeian cooking, you can't even tell the difference anymore. Hello, now. Nice to see you again. This isn't exactly a Parisian sidewalk cafe. You'd never know it looking at those two. That soda hasn't changed level in a half hour. It'll evaporate before they come out of the club. You know, Neil, I like your hometown. Well, it's like every other American town across the country. Mm, that's what I like about it. I can just hear you saying that back in Paris. Mm. Heard I was a pretty impossible guy in those days. Horrible. Well, what can you do? Live and learn. Some people live and never learn. They don't make crazy mistakes either and mess up their lives and other people's. Old people who never make mistakes are usually pretty dull, at least in my books. But let's skip the double talk. I hurt you plenty in those days. Well, I had it coming to me. Anyone would have who were foolish enough to let themselves be that vulnerable. Paris was just too much for me. I was insecure. My work didn't stack up with all the terrific painters all around me. I had to come home and find myself. Dig deep into my own grassroots to get a foothold. Then, things began to make sense again. Well, I guess what I did was more or less the same thing. Happy in your work here? I love it. You've got a good eye for design. I think so. How about a fellow? You interested in anybody? Of course. A nice guy. Real nice. He'd have to be to deserve you. Walker, look at me. Hmm? Could we order one soda with two straws, like those two idiots over there? That you don't mean that. Mocha's my favorite. How about you? Any doggone flavor suits me to a tea, so long as you're on the other straw. <laughs> One double rich mocha soda coming up with two straws. Walker, hmm? would you mind putting this in the jukebox, punching record number 13? I brought it back from Paris with me, and I always play it when I come in here. Number 13 coming up, madame.
now? Isn't that the tune they were playing in that sidewalk cafe our last day in Paris? One double rich mocha soda with two straws. Yes? Oh, yes, Packy, put her on. Hello, Nell. How's it going? Just beautifully, Dr. Hudson. Now, I suspected as much. I haven't seen that volatile artist of yours since he popped up at my house last Sunday. That's one week ago today. He's supposed to finish that portrait of me for the opening tonight. How about it? Well, don't be too hard on him, Dr. Hudson. I'm sure he'll finish it. Incidentally, the reason I'm calling, Mother's having a little supper over here tonight before the exhibit. Walker's coming over and she thought you might like to join us. Then the four of us can go to the exhibit together. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Nell, but I'm absolutely swamped with work here at the hospital today. I'll make the exhibit all right, but I'm afraid dinner's out of the question. You convey my regrets to your good mother, will you? Well, of course I will, but we'll miss you, Dr. Hudson. I'll see you at the exhibit later. Goodbye. bother you like this, Dr. Hudson. Now, stop apologizing. Come on in. Well, looks like he's still the same old walker. Let's go into my study where we can talk in comfort. Dr. Hudson, would you believe it? He never even showed up. Not even after I left? I don't know what we're going to do about that character of yours. Sit down. What is it, Dr. Hudson? You saw his exhibit tonight. Everyone, even Mother, said he was a genius. Oh, there's no question about that. He's everything he claimed to be. He's a first-rate painter. Well, at the opening exhibit tonight, a, a special invitational opening, to disappear like this and not show up. Well, it sounds to me like a first-class case of stage fright. Well, he still could have called. Still such a thing as manners. Mother swore she'd never speak to him again as long as she lived. Or to me either, if I ever saw him again. Well, we mustn't judge him until we've heard his side of the story. Any one of a thousand things could have happened. Called his hotel a hundred times tonight. If he's there, he just won't answer. No. Why don't we go over to his hotel room and have a look around? What's the use, Dr. Hudson? Been through this kind of thing back in Paris. I don't want to go through it again. All right, young man made too much sense to suddenly go off the deep end like this. There's something here that puzzles me. As a physician, I just can't dismiss this erratic behavior as merely temperamental. There's something else involved, I'm sure of it. You let me get my coat. I'll be with you in a jiffy. He doesn't seem to be here, Doctor. Hasn't he been here at all this evening? The desk clerk saw him earlier this evening, then he left. You didn't leave any messages? I'm afraid not. There were a number of phone calls for him. Well, I've been phoning him all evening. I know, Miss Barlow. He ignored your messages, wouldn't answer the phone when he was in. Well, maybe he left something around that'll give us a clue as to where he went. Mr. Story, would you mind leaving us alone? We'll wait here in case Mr. Deering returns. No, of course not. Excuse me. What is it? No, Walker couldn't have done that. I'm afraid it's his handiwork, all right. Well, that doesn't make sense. You saw his work at the exhibit tonight. Well, this is a complete distortion. It has nothing to do with Walker. Not with a healthy Walker, no, but this boy's sick. Sit down, now. I'm afraid this is not going to be very pleasant. This is obviously a distorted projection on canvas of my study. You see how all the distances and the perspective are exaggerated? You see this upper right-hand corner, how it all grays out into emptiness? And then this part down here, still distorted, obviously sketched in later. Well, I tell you, now this boy's sick. We've got to find him at once. You believe his vision is affected? Well, questionably. From pressure within his head. Well... Then you really think it is a tumor? 
Yes, I do. And I'm certain the test will bear me out. Say, do you remember... No, of course not. You weren't there. Last Sunday, just before you came to my house, he was deviling Mrs. Grady about the odor of cabbage in the house. Now, unpleasant olfactory hallucinations, often accompanied by a smacking of the lips, are among the first symptoms of a brain tumor. And often added to this are visual hallucinations, distortions of the observed scene due to defects in the visual field caused by pressure on the temporal lobes. As the pressure increases, the patient has a sense of escape, of flight. Exactly what happened here. You know, I'd even lay you a dime to a dollar the pressure's on the left side. You see how everything's distorted to the right? And he couldn't even finish the drawing on this side. Don't, don't. I'm sorry, no. I should have had more sense than to submit you to this. I'm afraid neurologists are like hounds on a hunt. You give them a scent and they're off after the quarry yapping for a fairy whip. What do you suppose that part is? Looks like an ice cream parlor. That is an ice cream parlor. It's our ice cream parlor. He's probably gone there. Let's get over there right away. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, but we're looking for a young man. There he is. Hello, Mel. We want you to come with us, Walker. We want to take you to a hospital. Hospital? You best leave me be, Nell. I, I'm no good, honest. I try to be. I don't know what it is. I, I think I'm going crazy. Don't say that, Walker. Dr. Hudson knows what it is. He'll have you well again in no time. You mean you're coming with us? Well, I love you, Walker. I'll never leave you again as long as I live. You're not sore at me for not showing up for dinner tonight? Of course not, darling. We understood. How did the exhibit go? Did you like my stuff? It was wonderful. Just wonderful. You paint every bit as well as you said you did. Even better. When I feel up to it, I'm going to finish that portrait of you that I started. Of course you'll finish it. I'm sorry I couldn't get it done for the exhibit, but you'll get it. You just wait and see. Don't worry. I'll hold you to that. If you don't need me for anything, Dr. Hudson, I'll be off to church. Of course, Mrs. Grady. Oh, is Kathy still at the Morgan? Oh, yes. You can't drag her away from that new baby. Let's hope she doesn't come back with any ideas. I told her she could stay there for lunch. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't bother. I'll see who it is, and then I'll be off. Well, look who's here. Got a kiss for the bride? What? We wanted you to be the first one to be revolted. Well, in that case, congratulations. Walker? I have a lot to thank you for, Doctor. I showed that uh, Justice of the Peace my scalp. He couldn't even see the scar. <laughs> Old Mother Hudson's hem-stitching improves as the years roll by. That uh, is the first installment on what I owe you, Doctor. Dwayne Hudson with our love. Walker, it's terrific. Mrs. Grady, you still here? Yes, Doctor. What is it? What do you think of that? Oh, well, that's very good. It looks just like you. It's incredible, isn't it? You paint a picture, and the most important thing is, it looks like the subject. <laughs> Who did you expect it to look like, Jock Mahoney? Uh, you stick to your cooking, Mrs. Grady. And you, and you stick, stick to your paints. 